Hey guys, welcome to a brand new video of the Tech Buddies podcast YouTube channel. As you would have read from the title and thumbnail, today's video is going to be a summary of yesterday's Apple event where they launched their new Apple Watch Series 9, Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the iPhone 15 series. I'll try to keep this video as short as possible. So let's begin without any further ado. I'll talk about the Apple Watch first because there are many very minor upgrades compared to the iPhones. The Apple Watch Series 9 comes with a new S9 system and package, which has a new GPU and a new neural engine. The neural engine enables Apple to localize Siri to the Apple Watch, which means you can use Siri even when you are offline, when there is no Wi-Fi or a cellular connection available. Apple has also added their second generation of the ultra wideband technology, with which you can use precision finding to locate your iPhone with ease if it ever gets lost. Apple has also made innovations in the display and the display can now go up to a peak brightness of 2000 nits, which is double the Apple Watch Series 8. And so outdoor visibility will be improved. The display can also be reduced to as low as one nit because of which the always on display won't consume that much battery life. And the main feature Apple showcased was this double pinch, which can uh, do a lot of tasks. For example, you're holding a cup of Starbucks coffee and you have your groceries and both your hands are occupied and you're getting a phone call, which you have to take. You can just do the double pinch action to answer your phone call. And once you've finished talking to the person, you can just do the same gesture again. You don't have to bring your hand forward. I'm just showing it for the camera. You just have to double tap. Yeah, those were the features of the Apple Watch Series 9. The pricing remains the same as last year. Coming to the Apple Watch Ultra 2, the only difference I see between the first generation and the second generation is that the Apple Watch Ultra 2's display can go up to a peak brightness of 3000 nits, which is Apple's brightest display ever. And yeah, others all features are those niche features. I didn't understand. There's some new diving profiles and all of those stuff. And the main thing for Apple Watch this year, which Apple is very proud of, is that the Apple Watch is completely carbon neutral. So from sourcing of materials to manufacturing the whole watch and to transportation, the carbon emissions are almost zero. I mean, zero. So kudos to Apple for that. And it's the first step in their journey to becoming completely uh, carbon neutral across all their portfolios by 2030. Yeah, those, those were the updates to the Apple Watch. I think you can... Skip this upgrade if you own an Apple Watch Series 8 or 7. And you can wait for the next generation, which is going to be the Apple Watch Series X. Talking about the iPhone 15 series, it's a very interesting upgrade in my opinion. And Apple has bid a lot of goodbyes to a lot of their favorite features. So let's talk about that. Let's begin with the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus. So iPhone 15 and 15 Plus bid goodbye to the old notch. And they say, they, they say hello to the dynamic island. So dynamic island is now, is now available on all four of the iPhone 15 series. And Apple also bids goodbye to the lightning port and all the iPhone 15 series comes with type USB type C now, which is really good because you can now use one cable to charge all your Apple devices, all your Android devices, everything. And Thanks to EU for making Apple do this. And however, Apple being Apple, they have uh, given USB 2.0 speeds. They have limited the port to USB 2.0 speeds in the iPhone 15 and 15 plus, while the iPhone 15 pro and pro max get USB 3.0 speeds, which can do up to 10 gigabits per second transfers. And the iPhone 15 and 15, Plus also bid goodbye to the 12 megapixel camera, which Apple honestly got tired of upgrading every year. And they finally decided to put the 48 megapixel main camera, which was there in the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max into the 15 series. So you can expect better camera performance in the iPhone 15 and 15 plus. The pricing remains the same. The iPhone 15 starts at $799, while the iPhone 15 plus starts at 899 Indian pricing 79,990 and 89,990. There are new colors. You now have black, pink, blue, yellow, and green. And it's 
uh, it's not a glossy back anymore. So maybe less fingerprints, but obviously use a case because it's an iPhone. Yeah. Now let's talk about the Pro series. It's finally, I think the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max are the most Pro iPhones ever. So let's talk about it. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max come with a titanium frame compared to stainless steel on the 14 Pro and Pro Max. Titanium is not only more durable, but it also makes the phone a bit more lighter. So I think I was reading some tweet which said that the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max is almost 20 grams lighter than the 14 Pro and Pro Max, which use stainless steel, which is a good thing. You might think it's not that big of a weight difference, but it makes a difference in the in-hand feel of the phone. So yeah, that is the advantage of titanium. Apple has made Apple has managed to make the bezels of the iPhone 15 Pro display extremely thin. I think it's one of the thinnest bezels in any smartphone, including the Android phones. There are upgrades to the camera as well. The 48 megapixel camera has been upgraded. And there's the Pro, I, the iPhone 15 Pro has the same camera setup. Whereas because of the larger size of the iPhone 15 Pro Max, Apple is able to include a 5x telephoto camera, which is a good upgrade in my opinion, but obviously the Android world is way ahead in terms of zoom. Zoom. Apple is slowly catching up. Oh yeah, the mute switch has been swapped for the action button, which can be used to do multiple uh, functions, not just mute unmute. You can you can use the shortcuts app to practically do anything using the action button, so it's programmable to your wish, which is a good addition and. Hopefully next year, this action button comes to the non-pro iPhones as well. Oh, I forgot to mention the A17 Pro. So that's the new chip and it comes with a lot of new, a lot of amazing features like hardware, ray tracing and stuff like that. So yeah, that is a new chip and it's based on three, uh, ASM3 three nanometer process. So it's way more efficient. So battery life can also you can expect an improvement in battery life as well. So yeah, that was the upgrades to the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. Coming to the pricing, the US pricing is uh, 999 for the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which starts with 256 GB of storage, is $1199. The Indian pricing has been slightly increased. So the iPhone 15 Pro and it's uh, seen a 5,000 rupees increase. And it now starts at 1,34,990 for the 128 GB variant. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max starts at 1,54,990, which is a 10,000 uh, uh, rupee increase compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I, in my opinion, the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max are overpriced in India. I mean, and I think the reason is that they are not manufactured in India, like the iPhone 15 and 15 plus they are manufactured in India. That's why they have been able to keep the pricing similar to the U S pricing. So yeah, there's, oh, there's like 50 to 60,000 rupees difference between the Indian pricing and the U S pricing, like U S pricing converted into rupee and the Indian pricing. So that's a really huge thing. Like even in, if you're buying the phone from Dubai, then you can get it for almost 40,000 cheaper, which is basically like taking a round trip to Dubai, buying the phone and coming will be still cheaper than buying the iPhone from India. So if you have any relatives abroad who can get it for you. That will be the best choice because it will be way cheaper for you that way. So yeah, that was the summary I had and a detailed episode will be coming on sun Sunday, 17 September. Stay tuned for that. That's it for this video. Bye-bye. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.